to the Nashville Daily Podcast. I am your host, Stuart Deming, and today's episode is brought to you by ExploreTours.com. If you want to learn about the history of the Ryman Auditorium, Fort Nash Borough, the Davidson County City Hall and Courthouse, the Tennessee State Capitol, the Hermitage Hotel, Printer's Alley, and so much more, you need to head over to ExploreTours.com and book your walking tour today. Use code ND10 to take 10% off the Nashville History Walking Tour. That's ExploreTours.com. Aaron, did you have an opportunity to watch the mayoral debate last night? Um, I got to watch a little bit of it. Um, and I watched about maybe an hour or so. That's about as much as I, cause I couldn't watch it as it was happening yeah, live. Yeah. So I had to watch it a little bit later. Uh, so I got about an hour or so, um, it, it was into it. And, and, uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's about all I needed to see. I will still go back and watch the rest of it, uh, out of principle. At some at some point, probably soon, just so I don't forget to do it. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was very interesting to say the least. For for those of you who don't know, uh, we uh, did the technical aspect for the Arts and Business Council Mayoral Forum. Uh, they they talked about the arts and and uh, mostly that. That was a week and a two days ago, uh, last Wednesday, and so. We hosted that. So we got to actually see a good preview of the candidates and their positions, how they talk, um, who could be some front runners. Uh, So we got to actually compare uh, those candidates then and then the candidates in their first uh, uh, debate debate because it uh, felt like it felt like the most civil debate I've ever seen in my entire life. It wasn't. It should have. It, it was a question and answer. It, it was nowhere it, near. It was not anything a that could be close to a debate. I've taken my ethics classes, <laughs> and we had full blown debates. This was not a debate. This this absolutely was not a debate. It should have been. But co- it's also it, we have to take this into factors. There's nine people or eight people running. Nine people. There's a large number of people running. There were twelve people at that thing. Oh, that's so many people. There were twelve people at that thing. No, so, so I understand. Plus says nine. So there's nine people. Yeah, we let nine national. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I uh, said, so and then the, the moderates as well. Or, Where or did it. I see twelve? I have no idea. I saw twelve at, at some point. Maybe that was. Oh, that in was doing previous. so, twelve candidates have joined the field. So only nine of them okay, were allowed we to. Not nine of them points. were on stage. The top nine out of the twelve. I mean, I guess that's that's how it is. Yeah, you can only fit. Hey, we got room for nine people. You know, I, I don't well, know what their the twelve qualifiers the, are. The twelve person is the extra camera costs too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we can't fit everybody on stage here. Um, but yeah, this this d- uh, d- uh, debate it should have been called a forum debate. Debate will get the ratings. I get it. Um, it was it was very interesting. Um, a few things that uh, I, I'll, we'll start on the funny things uh, that we noticed and then we'll get to the more serious stuff. Um, Natisha Brooks, uh, who is a former teacher running for mayor, uh, advocating for teachers. That was most of her kind of campaign slogan. Um, she started talking about how we shouldn't pay to park to eat downtown. She actually has something. One thing that I really do, uh, uh, agree with is that musicians who are playing downtown shouldn't be paying to park. I, I love yep. that idea of getting some kind of musicians pass uh, there. Well, so this um, was, this and, was and the she, question from New Show well, 5. Well, and, and uh, just because we probably won't talk about her much more after this. So I'm like, I'm going to get everything in now with this. She also had some really good ideas on. Uh, there were some things where she was hesitant on, but traffic yep. and and uh, commuting and light rails. Boom. She, she was, was the first was, one to say she was yep. she was on point with everything with that. Um, but it was, she was talking about, we shouldn't pay to park to eat. And then at the end, she, she just said, we shouldn't be charging churches $300. We should only be charging them $100. And I was like, and I was like who's I, charging churches? Like, I, and I, for I, what? I, what, what context am I missing here? That people yeah. are charging, uh, uh, churches and I'm, I'm, uh, it's, it's missing some context. Obviously it probably had to do with parking. But I needed some context on that. But 
but so it, was just, it was funny. Let's give you context of what News Channel 5 asked. Oh, okay, okay. As Nashville has grown, the tension between pivoting, uh, providing for residents and attracting tourists has also grown. How do you plan to balance those competing needs? You don't charge the churches. Yeah. So <laughs> it was... Uh, it was interesting to watch. Um, I, I will say some differences that we noticed. Uh, Alice Rowley was was really good uh, compared to uh, last time. Um, Jim Gingrich, he was on. He was on was, was on point compared to uh, to last time. I laughed. Um, the, I laughed so hard when he said, "I have." Uh, it was like later in the debate, like halfway through. And Matt just said that you need somebody with experience to do this. And he said, I am the one who has that experience. Yeah. Yeah. Matt kind of led him right, oh, it in, was, right into it was, that one. It was great. Yeah. Cause Matt was like, you need somebody with experience. And he led cause Jim has yep. a lot more experience in like the executive side of things than, yeah. than Matt. He led him right into that. We had, uh, senators, Heidi Campbell and Jeff Yarbrough. Heidi Campbell didn't come out as strong as I think she did during the arts one. Jeff Yarbrough mm -hmm. came out stronger than he did, uh, yeah. than he did during the arts one. Um, Freddie O'Connell actually, I think, came out stronger than he did. He did pretty well in the arts one. He came out a little bit stronger here. Um, the the one thing that I did not, uh, that I really did not see, Vivian Wilhoyt was the additional person who is not in the arts, mm -hmm. uh, the arts forum last week. The, the one thing that I did not see, uh, because Freddie O'Connell who voted against the stadium is, is really using that as a selling point for him as mayor saying he's sticking up for the local residents. Uh, Jim, Jim Gingrich, even though he didn't have a vote, you know, he was like, he was on the side of, I did not want a new stadium. Um, but the interesting thing is those who voted yes, which would only be, I guess, Sharon Hurt in that. Uh, I don't think that we have any other council members who would have been in there no, that no, voted yes. Would, no. But one of the things that anybody who is in favor of it or voted yes, so, so like Sharon Hurt or anybody who was in favor of the stadium, they did not say, I saved the taxpayers over $1 billion, which would have been a huge point to bring up. I think people who are in favor of the stadium were just scared to say it um, because it's such a contentious issue with the, the local voting base. Um, but it was, it was very interesting that nobody brought it up. Now I still have an hour to watch of it or 45 minutes to watch it. So maybe somebody said it, but I don't, it, I, I don't it, think so. I, I don't think so either. Maybe some people are waiting to kind of feel out the, the waters on that, the on that issue. Yeah. Um, but but those who voted against it or were or were or are opposed to it are letting people Very know vocal. right now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so this is coming from WSMV. Uh, so these are the twelve people. Let's see. These are all the people running for mayor. So we will just go ahead and show uh, their photos real quick, Aaron, if you don't mind. Yeah. All right. So, so that's that's Natasha Brooks. She doesn't want to charge churches. I mean, I don't blame her. Uh, Fran, uh, Fran Bush. She was not in the the, uh, the uh, debate. debate. She was night. in the arts forum last mm -hmm. week. Heidi Campbell. Heidi she Campbell, was there. Senator uh, Bernie Cox. He's ran for mayor the, like the last two or three times. Is he like the Joe Biden of running for Nashville mayor? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but he, like he only had like it, I can't remember. I was reading it somewhere. He only had less than a thousand votes uh, with the last election. Okay. Jim Gingrich, uh, is he is he still with Alliance Bernstein or did no? He's he, retired. He's retired. Okay, yep. so but he he was instrumental in bringing he was the deciding, was the deciding vote deciding, yes. on bringing Alliance Bernstein to which Nashville, is, which is massive for the city. It's that's, that's, we it's won't significant. See, you can't ignore that. Yeah, we, we won't see the full effects of Alliance Bernstein moving here for yeah. a while. Uh, that's Sharon Hurt, council member, um, and also she voted for the stadium. Yep. she's proud. Of, she has a few things. I think she's very, very wild in some of her policies, but she has a lot of good ideas. She's, she's, she's an also, ideas person. And she's also done a lot. She's, she has so a like lot. So, like, the Greater Regional Council uh, running all of these different things over on Jefferson Street. Like, she has done a lot. Yep. Uh, Freddie O'Connell, he is the council member of District 19. Yep. This is his last term or last year of his last term. Yep. Uh, then you have Alice Rowley, who uh, she has worked for the state of Tennessee for a long time. Um, then you have Matt Wiltshire. Uh, I think it's Wiltshire. Wiltshire. Yeah. Uh, he was the, it was the, um, 
He was in the, the mayor's office. So he was in office. finance, mayor's yep. office, and then moved to the executive director of, of housing, Metro right? Housing and Development yep. for, I think, like nine years or something like that. A few it's, years. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, Jeff Yarborough. He's a senator. And Tennessee that's senator. It. Okay, that's okay. it. That's it. All right. Well, there you go. All right. So uh, a few of them are coming onto the show here in the next couple weeks. Uh, we are excited. We're we're, we're going to have a, a little different approach. We want to hear their stories. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I, I also want to dive into some of their past expertise and how that's going to impact the future of Nashville. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, so before we get into uh, something that we love, love to talk about, um, and that is we're, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the Titan Stadium. Then we're going to be talking about some Bucky's expansion because they are being very aggressive. But before we talk about that, uh, if you need a great start to your morning, the sun is out just a little bit earlier every single day. So you may be, be uh, automatically woken up if you're somebody who's <laughs> woken up by the sun uh, every single morning like Stuart. And uh, so you, you need a little bit of pick me up when you get up because it's just a little bit earlier uh, Then you need to have blessed day coffee. We start every single morning with blessed day coffee. It is incredible. It gets us up and going. They have some amazing blends, including uh, the uh, amazing sunrise, Tennessee sunrise blonde roast. Uh, that that's uh, pretty, that's pretty much our daily, that's, that's our daily I am, brew. I am drinking right yeah, now. You can't see it, but I'm drinking it right now. <laughs> and, uh, so that gets us, uh, ready to go for the day. And, uh, one of the best deals that you can have, especially if you're in Nashville or you have friends visiting in Nashville and you're looking for gifts to give them, uh, almost everybody loves coffee. And so you can get them a bag and you don't even have to go out and, uh, buy and drive it or you go out and drive to get it. You can get it delivered for free if you're in the Nashville area and you can use the discount code XPLR20 at checkout for 20% off. Get some of their incredible roast over at blessedaycoffee.com. Go get caffeinated today. So the Metro Nashville Sports Authority voted to approve an architect of record for the new $2.1 billion Tennessee Titans Stadium at its meeting yesterday, May 18th. Uh, so this is really interesting. There was an architecture firm that they've approached to get the renderings and the design over in Kansas City, uh, Manica uh, Architecture. But the the architect of record is the one who's actually building the blueprints of the facility. Interesting. Okay, so let's look at who this is. This is uh, TVS. They will be responsible for the overall execution of stadium design, and they will be working with the design architect, yep. that Kansas city based thing. So it's a very interesting thing. Uh, they were impressed by their portfolio. Um, and they said they bring a significant of breadth of experience in large scale venues and share our dedication to delivering a game changing high character facility in, uh, in Nashville. Um, so that is cool. TVS. Okay, um, so th this is, is the what? architect of record. So architect of record is the architect or architecture firm whose name appears on the building permit issued for a specific project in which that architect or firm performed services. All right. They're the ones who get the building permits. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Architect of record. You learn something new every single day. Uh, also, speaking of learning new things, um, Bucky's. Everybody loves Bucky's. If you've not been to a Bucky's, um, then I would I would suggest make a little road trip. They they're worth it. It's it's fun. For those who are hating on the Bucky's, I feel sorry for you because they're fun. Yeah, they're it, a lot of fun. Is, Bucky's is the American dream all in <laughs> one place. Shopping, food, pristine bathrooms, all of it. Um, so they're, they are enjoyable. They're, they're worth a fun little trip. Stuart and food I is fantastic. The food is fantastic. Yeah. Stuart and I, uh, took a little road trip for the, the one in Crossville that opened, yeah. uh, for their grand opening. It's a lot of fun. Um, especially go in the morning when they're doing all their, uh, brisket tacos and everything. It's very, very exciting. Uh, the, and they the, also, they also pay really well. Like they, they for their employees, yeah. They, 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 they don't pay. Employees. They don't pay you to walk in. No, they no. Um, <laughs> you yeah, can't pay them. They could every with some free every time. Food every now and yeah, then. yeah, yeah. Every Bucky's run is uh, it, it gets pricey because they have so many good things. Yeah, it's I've uh, spent a lot of money at Bucky's. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so 
we got a little off track there. New things with Bucky's and discovering new things. Uh, recently, Bucky's just announced another location near Nashville. I'm putting near in quotation marks uh, because they're they're kind of hitting a, a radius around Nashville. Uh, this most recent one that they announced is going to be in Smith's Grove, Kentucky, which is the first exit when you leave Bowling Green going north on I-65. So that's where Smith's Grove uh, Kentucky is it's a, a small, 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 small town. Um, but that exit is going to be very big because they want to capture the I 65 audience yeah. or, or, uh, yeah, passengers between Nashville and Louisville. they hit Bowling Green. Oh, so it's actually after Bowling Green. Well, yeah, I mean, coming down yeah, yeah. to Nashville, yeah. they'll hit it before their uh, people coming to Nashville. Yep. They will hit, they will hit that audience before they hit Bowling Green so on I-65. Well, let's go ahead and show uh, my computer real quick. Uh, so Nashville is down here in the center of the map, and then where that little red dot is, that's where the new Bucky's is going to be going. What's really fascinating about this, and I wish I did this beforehand, I wish I was going to show you all the red spots of where Bucky's was going to be going. So you have Bucky's <laughs> up north. You're going to have Bucky's. If you know where Clarksville is, there's going to be a Bucky's, Bucky's coming to Clarksville. Yep, and that one's slated for? Potentially 2024. Okay. Uh, I don't know if ground has been chosen for that one. Okay. But I do know with confidence that ground has been chosen for the one in Murfreesboro. So okay. So if you come down here, there's literally, literally going to be a triangle of Bucky's surrounding Nashville. Yeah. Which is amazing. That's going to be uh, absolutely. Technically, incredible. it's like a it's like a polygon because if you go over to, <laughs> if you go to Crossville, then you have the Crossville one. It's like this weird polygon stop sign thing. Yeah. Yeah, and and I don't think they're going to slow down either. You, we may see one. Um, this would be interesting. Do you think they'll put one in between Nashville and Memphis anywhere? Maybe a Jacksonville type place. Yes, or I, uh, Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, yeah. I I think Jackson would be prime for it. Uh, it's a little bit bigger market than the other markets that they're going to. Uh, besides Murfreesboro, Murfreesboro, they're going to the southern part of Murfreesboro. Let me actually show you. Hey, dude, Murfreesboro is going to be okay, insane. So this is coming from uh, a radio station, I believe, down in Murfreesboro. So you have Joe B. Jackson Parkway. Right here is I-24. Okay. And it's going to be right here at the edge of this. Uh, so this one, supposedly, according to this radio station, is 76,000 square feet, which, if that's correct... That's going to be 2,000 square feet larger than the Sevierville one that's opening this summer. Really? Yes. So I have Google wow. Maps. I have Google Maps up and running. Okay. So where this little spot is over here, where my mouse is, that's where, let me zoom in. <laughs> okay. So like just right over here, this is where this Bucky's is going to be going off of I-24. Okay. So it's a little wow. bit south of the downtown corridor of Murfreesboro. Yeah, I don't think there there probably wouldn't be much room to put it. Is uh, that in between Murfreesboro and Nashville? Let's zoom in on the interstate real quick. Is yeah. this where it's? Oh, yep, that answers my question. Because because it's, they it's would where it's in the, the two lanes and not the four lanes. Yeah, because I I think their goal, um, I, I think their goal is to capture the market of people before they're coming into Nashville. Yeah. Um, uh, so that's why it's on more of the outer part of uh, or the more southern eastern part of murfreesboro mm -hmm. so yeah pretty cool so they're they're capturing it from the the crossville side the south of murfreesboro side the north of of nashville side on 65 maybe jackson maybe jackson will be next either jackson or dixon it's too far it's so it's about an hour out so if if you look Dixon, at w that wouldn't be terrible like it before may, you it get may into have to, it may have to go into Burns, so Burns Bon Aqua area yeah uh, Dixon I don't know if they're going to be able to accommodate right there off of the Dixon exit well no if if the pattern continues they do it the b Burns most yeah. likely at Burns yeah somewhere yeah. somewhere around in there uh, so that'll be interesting let us know your thoughts on a uh, uh, the Buckies coming into Smiths Grove to Clarksville to south of Murfreesboro, the one opening in Sevierville this summer. Uh, if you haven't been, are you looking forward to going or will you never visit a Bucky's out of principle just because you don't want to have any fun? Yeah, uh, fun times at Bucky's. I feel like I could eat off the bathroom floor. 
because it's so clean. All right, we'll see you guys later. Thank you for listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. If you want to learn more, head to NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media at Explore.Nash on Instagram, Nashville Daily Podcast on YouTube, and Explore.Nash on YouTube as well. The Nashville Daily Podcast is an Explore LLC production, copyright 2023.